Okay, we're in lesson six, which is all about sound. So if I toggle this on, you should hear that sweep and then the click. And here, these would just be basic clicks. So how do we add this in our site? I'll jump over to what we're working on right here. We want to first of all add an extra toggle up top here. So this is in the first stack, which is right here. This switch wrapper is for the motion. So let's go ahead and just copy this up by hitting Option Shift in the up arrow. And then here, I just want to change each of these here to sound. So now I've got a sound option right here, toggle sound one way or the other. So just like before, we're going to handle this the exact same way, but we actually need some audio to toggle one way or the other. So I'm going to come below, I guess let's just come right here inside the body tag. We're going to add some audio tags. Now, if I were to jump over into my sidebar and look into the public folder here, you're going to see we've got a check and a toggle MP3, and I can just add those directly here. So I can say check.mp3, and I'm going to give this an ID here of audio check. And I'm going to also give it a preload tag of none. This will basically make sure until it's played, it doesn't need to be loaded. So the first time might be a little slow, but at least you're not loading tons of audio when you don't need it. Now, these are very tiny files, but that's typically what I've done for best practice. That's my understanding. Next, I want to grab the next one and change this to toggle, and this will be audio toggle. Now, depending on how you've set up your system, if you're using a different kind of thing, obviously you'll need this to be at the root or just point it relatively to whatever you're working in. And Vite, anything in the public folder is at the root, which is why I can just do a forward slash and check or toggle or whatever it happens to be. So with that little bit done in the HTML, everything else will be done in the JavaScript. So let's come up top here. First of all, we need to actually select those audio elements. I'll do const audio check. This will be equal to document.query selector. And I just want to select anything with the ID of audio check. All right, and then I'll just copy this down and we're going to have an audio toggle. And this will be the ID of audio toggle. Now, just to make sure I can see these on one line without it wrapping, let's expand this out because we don't really need to pay attention to this too much this time around. Now below here, I need to add some kind of variable where I can track whether or not I'm allowed to play audio. So we'll say let is audio playable right now I won't point it to true or false. I'll just leave it at is audio playable. Next, I want to have a function that will play my audio whenever I toggle something. All right, so let's come down here and let's create another function. This will be called play audio. Now it's going to take in a type of audio because sometimes it'll be a check and sometimes it'll be a toggle. So I need to pass in either check or toggle. So inside here, I want to do a check, first of all, to say, am I allowed to play audio? So we'll say is audio playable. So if this is true, then I can go ahead and run stuff. Otherwise, it'll just jump out of this loop altogether. Now, if it's true, I want to grab the right audio thing. So my audio sound is going to be the type, and I want to do a little check here. So I'm going to say if it is the type of check, right? So if I passed in, it needs to be a check or a toggle. If it's the type of check, then I'm going to go ahead and just grab my audio check. Otherwise, I'm going to grab my audio toggle. So you can do this in a couple different ways, but basically I'm declaring a variable that's going to point to either this element or this element, depending on what I pass in. Now below here, I'm going to then take that declaration, my audio sound, and then I'm going to set the current time to zero. The reason I do this is if you click really quickly and it hasn't finished playing, it won't know what to do. So I always want to restart the audio as soon as I click. So I'll set it back to zero and then I'll just do audio sound dot play. This is a method that lives on audio elements in the browser. So now that I've got this function written, what I want to do is come down here and I want to actually play it after each of these. So I'm going to grab both of these with hitting option and clicking both times. And here we're going to do play audio and I need to pass it a type. Now in this case, the top one needs to be toggle and the bottom one down here needs to be check. That's because all of my things right here are going to be sliders that go back and forth. So I want them to have that toggle sound and all of these have the check sound. Now, right now, if I click any of these, no matter what I do, even if I have this toggle sound on, it's not going to play anything. And the reason is because this declaration up top stops it because this is always false right now because there's no value here. So every time at this check, it just says, oh, it's not playable and it skips it. So how do we update this itself? Well, what I want to do is every time I check this right here, one of these toggles, this toggle in particular, I want to basically swap that value for true or false. So right before I play the audio, I'm going to do one more check just inside the toggles. And the reason I'm doing it inside the toggles, once again, is because the toggle sound is one of these toggle systems, one of these check check boxes. So I'm going to come in here and say, if the name that I've selected is sound, then I'm going to say, is audio playable, needs to be equal to whatever the checked status is. Now, technically here, I'm also updating the site UI, even if it's sound, this will add the data attribute of sound. So if I come over here, elements, and I check on this right here, you'll see now it says data sound equals true. However, in this case, 
Um, I don't actually need that. It's not going to hurt anything, so I'm just going to leave it there. But just so you know, this is another way of theming your site. So in this case, it happens to be audio, and I don't really need that data attribute for anything in particular. But now if I did that correctly, you should be able to hear those toggled sounds whenever this is toggled on. All right, so we've got everything working just like we expect. And if I come over here to the application storage, now whenever I've checked any of those things, they've updated down here. So I've got motion true, theme, light, all this kind of stuff. So this is all working properly. We're not, however, loading this by default when we first come to the page and seeing if they have custom settings. And that's what we're gonna do in the next video.